Minister Howard Quayle uh, joins us this lunchtime. Good afternoon. Pastor Mai, how Pastor, are you doing, Andy? Pastor Mai, yes. Uh, what's your reaction to the UK general election result? Well, obviously, on the Isle of Man, we would remain neutral as to the outcomes, but I think I'd like to congratulate Prime Minister Boris Johnson for the result of the general election. A, a significant majority is something we'd all like, and I look forward to continuing to work with him and his new government. Uh, I've seen your uh, Twitter feed already today. You've uh, congratulated James Durridge and David Norris particularly. Yes, the, these are good friends of the Isle of Man, and you should never forget your friends. Um, David Morris, for example, is always good to ask a question on behalf of the Isle of Man or if someone said something about the Isle of Man where they clearly haven't understood the situation, then David has always been good to um, point them in, in the right direction. And I was delighted that he was able to get it, as I was delighted, David, uh, as you know, Ian Blackford, Hilary Benn, Sammy Wilson, all good friends of the Isle of Man. Uh, so where do we go from here? Well, I think in the previous administration, we, we, we've had unprecedented access to um, officers, civil servants, politicians in Westminster regarding the views on where the UK w was going to. And I, I hope we can maintain that unprecedented level and, and business as usual. Obviously, Boris has said his slogan is let's get Brexit done. And we will be listening with great intent to the Queen's speech, which we think will be next week, Wednesday, Thursday. But that's not set in tablets of stone. And then we will be closely watching and working with the UK government to ensure that whatever they negotiate, because obviously if they do um, leave the European Union on the 31st of January of next year, there will then be a transitional period which goes on to the end of December 2020 and the UK will be doing its, its negotiations mm -hmm. with the European Union to see if it can negotiate a deal. And obviously the Isle of Man will be ensuring that it's well informed of what's happening so we can position ourselves to make sure we're ready. What representations uh, does the, the Manx government make to the UK in terms of those negotiations? Do we, do we take what we're given or can we influence it? Well, no, we... Behind the scenes, I regularly send over officers to meet with their UK counterparts. So DEFA, for example, are significantly impacted. I think there was, by, by Brexit, there's 1,200 instruments that have had to be changed. So they're regularly away. Officers from various other departments are, are away. I go away to see um, the Minister for, for DEXU to get the latest thinking so that we can understand the UK's position. James Doodridge took over from Robin Walker, who we had a very good relationship. In fact, James was on the island not that long ago, Andy. So it's it's about putting over the concerns of the Isle of Man, putting over where we're, maybe we see opportunities, and if there are any icebergs there, ensuring that we're able to, to dodge them. But by able to communicate with the UK government, then we, we can find out the latest thinking. Uh, Ireland will obviously loom large as well. For the first time ever, Northern Ireland returned more uh, nationalist than unionist uh, MPs. Um, and can you foresee a time when there'll be customs checks on our boats travelling to and from Dublin? Well, at the moment in time, from a movement of people point of view, it, it, there will be the freedom of movement for, for Ireland, Northern Ireland. Um, and ag again, we re remain neutral on the, the outcome between um, what, what happens over there. We're, we're friends with both sides and, and we, we keep that relationship going. We, we have a um, we've signed already a new customs and excise deal with the United Kingdom because our current deal is with the European Union and, and, and the UK. And if the UK does leave the, the European Union, then I wanted to ensure that people going from the Isle of Man to the United Kingdom wouldn't have any customs problems or wouldn't have to go through customs. We'll just have to um, see, see what, what, what happens there. We, we can't influence the outcome, obviously, between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, but if there's anything that we can do to help out our, our, our nearest neighbours who we have a good relationship with, with, then we will, of course, do that. Uh, you know Nicola Sturgeon. You've met her several times. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the SNP is tightening its grip on the the Scottish political scene. How do you do you view that? Well, I, I, again, Andy, I think it's important that we, we are our own, our own nation, and, and we take it, uh, we take a, a neutral stance on that. Obviously, I, I know Nicola well. I, I know the First Minister of of, of Wales well, and um, quite a few in, in the UK government. We we maintain a neutral stance. We work with them. I'm. Um, 
I'll be, I've been looking at um, Scottish Energy to see how they're um, doing the renewable green energy and some of the work that they're doing. And our minister, Geoffrey Boot, has been away to see it. I'm, I'm going away to see them next year to, to discuss this. So we have a really good relationship with them. And I think whatever they agree, from an Isle of Man point of view, it's in our interests that the United Kingdom whether it includes Scotland or not, that they have a, a successful economy because if, if they have a successful economy, we will benefit from that because 80% of our trade is with the United Kingdom. Manx passports don't have the European Union on them anymore. Um, how will the movement of people with Manx passports be viewed after Brexit, do you think? Well, again, we're in close work in relationship with the UK government, um, to, we, we've been reviewing the mechanisms of how we print the passports, what they look like, and this is ongoing work. So, it's there's, there's going to it's going to be business as usual. Even if the UK do leave, say on the thirty first of January next year, there will be a transitional period up until the end of December of twenty twenty, where the fine print will hopefully be sorted out in the, in the negotiations, and that's one of the areas where we will have to see what happens, but ensure that we're ready to react and and if we have to come up with a new style of passport then, then so be it but it's it's making sure that we're at the table understanding what's going on so we're well prepared uh, lots of work's been done since that um, referendum in britain lots of civil servants have been looking at um, possible scenarios how things may possibly map out um in general are you optimistic about the position of the isle of man within whatever sphere the UK finds itself? Well, we are as well prepared as possible. We've got our legislation ready to go should the UK leave. We are regularly meeting with the UK government. The previous Prime Minister, Mrs May, assured me in, in writing that the Isle of Man would be able to meet with the UK negotiators to discuss any concerns that we had with proposals or where we see opportunities. And I think it's really important that we listen to the business community, those at the coalface, listen to their views and where they see opportunities for the Isle of Man, maybe where they see problems, and then we can get them in to meet with the UK negotiators to put over those concerns so at least the negotiators are aware of our concerns when they're having the meetings with the European Union. We can't sit round the table, but neither can Wales, Scotland or, or Northern Ireland. Uh, what about European Union, Union citizens who are now living and working on the Isle of Man? What position do they find themselves in? Well, they're absolutely welcome. We have already published guidelines that they can register um, their registration on the Isle of Man. And if they've been five years, then they will have the right to, to stay here. If they haven't been five years, but they're already here, by the time the UK leaves the European Union, then they can stay resident and work the five-year pe right. period so we we greatly value the people from the european union who are on the isle of man they're adding to our economy they're helping the isle of man grow we want them to stay and we have the mechanisms in place for themselves to register and quite a few have to date i think well over a thousand so have already is done that it. the european temporary leave to remain scheme yes but as I say, we will keep them fully updated should things change the position because, as I say, the, the UK government have to negotiate with the European Union and we closely follow the UK immigration standards. So we will obviously keep people in the loop. But I want to reassure any EU resident living on the Isle of Man that they are wanted, welcomed, and we will do everything in our power to ensure that the transition is smooth. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen uh, Senator Ian Gorst's uh, reaction to uh, the external relations uh, minister for Jersey who said uh, Mr Johnson's made a commitment to get Brexit done. It's very likely we'll see the withdrawal bill brought back before the new parliament before the end of 2019. Our, this is Jersey's positive relationship is critical as the United Kingdom moves to the next stage of Brexit and enters into discussions on future economic partnership between the UK and the EU. Jersey needs to ensure that its interests continue to be well understood and properly taken into account, ensuring the best possible outcome for Jersey, its residents and uh, business. Same story for the Isle of Man. Absolutely. I, I have um, regular meetings with, with Senator Gorst and also Gavin um, St. Pierre, the Chief Minister of Guernsey. I always find that working together, the three Crown dependencies, 
can have greater input. But it, it's it's exactly the same for the Isle of Man. It's an incredibly important time, and we need to make sure that we're well prepared, we're well informed, and that we can move quickly. And that's what we have done. When do you think this will all be over, Chief Minister? <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball. Bearing in mind, we have a general election here in 2021. Well, the, well it, theoretically, the actual transition agreements will have to be done by the end of December of 2020. Whether that will happen or not, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but the impact and then future negotiations will be going on for a number of years, Andy. So this isn't going to be done by... Um, the end of um, 21, I've, I've always said that my entire five years would, would deal with the majority of Brexit, maybe, but it would still be going on for my successor. I know you uh, possibly wouldn't have anticipated that uh, you would have spent your entire uh, minister, chief minister role dealing with this darn thing. Well, I, I came into, I'm all about intergenerational fairness, so balancing the economy, sorting out public sector pension debt were the two big issues in, in my mind to make sure that we passed over a, a fair um, set of policies and foundations for the next generation. Along came Brexit. I'm delighted to say that we have our five-year programme for government. We haven't eased off the pace. We've pushed ahead with that um, plan. But also, we've had to just run faster to ensure that we're there with Brexit too. And whatever the UK um, move on, we're, we're well informed. Nowadays, people uh, tend to exhibit jitters more than they did in the past. Um, I don't know whether people are less stoic than ever they used to be, but some people do have the jitters about Brexit and the Isle of Man's position within that. What can you say to reassure them? Well, we're well prepared. The economy is growing again. The population is growing again. We can't be complacent. We're living in a tough world. I would hope that now we have there's a, a one party with a clear majority that the investment from business that's maybe been withheld because there was no certainty going forward, that business will start to invest. And if the UK economy starts to grow again, then that can only be good for the Isle of Man. But we are in a good position. We can't be complacent and We've had un unprecedented levels of access to UK officials and ministers, and long may that continue. Have you any idea how much all this has cost in civil service time? I, 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 would, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess. Uh, because you've been, every, every uh, the UK government's been handed this hand of cards and everybody has had to deal with it. Do you sometimes feel a bit frustrated that you've had to deal with all this on your desk as well as running the government as well and, and as you say, growing the economy? Well, well, that's life. I mean, this administration has also had to do with tax three, substance, beneficial ownership, Money Valley, EU Code of Conduct Group, all major things which have happened off the island, which I, th I suppose if, you, if you've got your day-to-day -day life and just getting on with living on the Isle of Man, you might not appreciate, but all these have been major issues that we've dealt with successfully, put to bed and, and moved on along with growing the economy. And I suppose that's what we stood as politicians to do our best working with our officers. And... Uh Will you be standing in 2021? Oh, that's too early. Too early to say. I'm, I'm sure April, May of 21, I'll, I'll um, make a decision. But you're happy in politics at the moment? Well, I didn't come into politics to make a career out of it. I, I came in to do a job. I felt there was a need to drive through, sometimes unpopular decisions. In the last administration, unpopular decisions had to be made because we'd lost a significant amount of money with the VAT and with our receipts and I think it's really important that intergenerational fairness that the young people of the island aren't saddled with a load of debt and, and I came in to do a job not to make a career out of it and I hope to um, stick to that.